Benvenuto. Today, we do it in the pizza oven. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to another grilling video. And today is gonna to be a bit of an unboxing as well as an initial setup of a new toy we have that we're really looking forward to. This is the uh, Bighorn model J626. Yes, I had a look at it because I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, outdoor pizza oven. So I did a lot of research on these and yes, you know, you can spend anywhere from $99 at Walmart up to $2,000 online for all kinds of outdoor pizza ovens. I found one that I think is a really, really good deal. Fairly lower price, um, had all the things I wanted, would get up to almost 700 degrees or so they say, we'll check it out here. Um, but what I figured is let's go ahead and unbox this. I'll show you what all's in it. I'll go off camera, read all the instructions, and then we'll come assemble and put everything together. We'll do a complete review, show you how it works. This could be a two-parter depending on how long the video is. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get started. So again, Bighorn Tabletop Gas Pizza Oven, and I did want to get one that was gas. Um, I thought a lot about using wood pellets because I like a good wood-fired pizza, but unfortunately, it's really hard to get those very hot. And so many of them have, a, have such a small hopper, they take 20 to 30 minutes to truly get up to over 500 degrees in most cases. And for most of them, they'll say they burn from anywhere from four to 11 minutes. That means you have to refill the wood pellets just to get the thing to preheat. And I thought, you know what, I don't know that I wanna do that. I don't know that I'm diligent enough to kind of keep feeding it at the right time while I'm trying to make my pizza, spread it out, get it in there and turn it every couple of minutes given that they cook in just a few minutes at all. So. This one is one that we really thought would be a good, uh, a good fit. I'll put links in the description down below for where you can get one on Amazon. We just did it on Amazon, delivered you know, next day, all covered under Prime, so good deal for us. Okay, let's get started. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and get this tape cut up and get this thing out of the box so it's a little bit more manageable. I am sure this is not what they have in mind when uh, they give you instructions on how best to do this, but that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Got our little box here. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear the, uh, the thunder. It is dark in that direction, which is why I turned this around. <laughs> this part off of that. So, be careful, there's a pizza stone in there. You don't want anything happening to that. Let me finish just opening up all this stuff and I'll get it set up here. We've got it all unpacked and have all the parts right here in front of me. It was packed really, really well. It had covers around the bottom side of this. Uh, it had a piece over the top with styrofoam. Um, there's a pizza stone in here and that was wrapped up in bubble wrap and then attached to the top of the styrofoam piece that was over that. Um, one thing to note, inside the oven, there was this little box that was tie wrapped. So, you know, you'll need a wire cutters or something to cut that. So here's what we have, the oven itself. We have our little front door. Um, we have a folding pizza peel. Uh, we have the stone, obviously that's really important to get the temperature up. We have a set of legs and this little tool here. I can't remember what that's for, but I'm sure the instructions will tell us. And then this last little box that was attached inside, I suspect is the chimney, let's see. Yep, chimney and some screws. So this will probably go right up here somewhere. Yeah, looks like it goes right there, looking at the holes, and we'll get this all figured out. All right, let's, um, let's start by looking at the instructions, and I'm gonna put the legs on because I don't wanna scratch up my table here. That's my first sort of priority. So the instructions look really easy on this. There's only six screws in the whole kit. It looks like there's one for each of the four legs, and then there's two that hold the chimney in. That's, that's essentially gonna be it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put on the legs. Again, I don't wanna scratch the bottom of this. So we're just gonna tip this up on its back, very carefully and obviously we do not have the stone or anything in here as you would imagine and we have four of these screws we're just gonna pop one right down into the side of this leg and let's put these guys on nice and simple so I'm working on the front left corner here this is the front side of it and the bottom so this is the front left corner 
and just gonna go ahead and put my screw on the screwdriver and then run it right through the leg until it sticks out the end like this. And then, let's get these guys tightened right up on here, nice and simple. All right, and we're gonna repeat the same process for the last leg. And I will say this assembly is really simple. I mean, we're talking again about only six screws, <laughs> the four legs and two for the chimney. And here comes the rain. We will be continuing this soon. <laughs> All right, forgive the change around here. It started raining, we put everything up, and now uh, we are back. So um, you saw us put the four feet on, and now it's just a matter of using the last two screws, and that is to hold this little chimney in place. It is really, quite frankly, that simple. So let's go ahead and put this guy on, and then we'll screw it in place with the two screws and a Phillips head screwdriver. All right, so we're just gonna take our chimney, and we're gonna pop it right down in here. Make sure the holes line up on the right side. Start these little guys by hand and then we'll screw them in. So the last part of the assembly is to go ahead and put the, uh, the stone in here. So I'm just gonna take the propane cord here, set it on the table. Okay, so before we go ahead and test this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the battery in, the starter here real quick, and then we're gonna do a leak test. And you know, it's funny, the right on the propane tank, there's a notice to do this, but I've always done this with anything that has um, a gas grill. It just sort of makes sense. Um, if you take a combination of about 50% water and 50% soap, all you need is, you know, I don't know, a quarter of an ounce or three or four tablespoons or something like that, not much. And you can see, I have this little tiny bowl and one of these little craft brushes, mixed it up real good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the gas and we're gonna check all the connections before we put the pizza stone in. And the reason we do that is if there was a gas leak, you would see bubbles, like blowing bubbles, right? So that's exactly what we wanna see. If you see any of those bubbles, you know there's a leak and you don't wanna turn it on. So with that, I've got the propane tank connected. We'll turn it on. All right, with everything tightened up, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the propane. And we're just gonna paint this soapy water at every one of these fittings. And what we're looking for is if you see any bubbles forming, you know there's an issue there. Now, I'm a fan of always testing these tanks too. You never know what you get with these. All right, tank side looks good. Now let's move up to the device itself. I like to do it at all of these spots. I'm going right inside here where this connects up to the burner. None there. I like to do it behind the knobs. None there. And there's really nothing inside because the way this works is there's there's the burner tube and then a venturi sits right in it and there's air all around it so you won't see anything leaking from there but we'll check this knob just to make sure so we found no leaks in that and the reality is i've probably done this i don't know a dozen times over the years anytime i've done something new or got a new grill or did a repair on a grill and I've actually only seen one time that I had a fitting loose where I actually saw these bubbles. And it was nice to actually see it because then you know what it looks like. Um, I would encourage you, if you're not sure what you're looking for, manufacture a small little leak just to test it with the soapy water so you know what the bubbles look like. But it's pretty obvious. All right, so with that, it's time to just fire this up real quick. See that the burners all come on. It's gonna be the first time. I'm not even putting the stone in there yet. I just wanna make sure it all lights up and it works the way I would sort of expect. All right, so let's go ahead and test it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by pressing the lighter button. We wanna hear the clicking, make sure we see a little spark in there. And then we wanna go ahead and turn the knob on to the light position and hold it in. This has one of those safety thermocouples where you have to um, push the knob in for the gas to start coming out. Once it heats up the thermocouple, then it will continue to release the gas. It's an unbelievably important safety feature and I was really impressed for the price of this one that it has that on both burners. That is good news. Let me kind of show you what that looks like just so you're familiar with it. I've zoomed into the, the middle burner here and you can see the burner, you can see the holes in the top where the flames come out. This right here is the thermocouple. This heats up and once it's up to a certain temperature, it will allow the gas to continue to flow. Right below it is the actual igniter. So if I press the igniter button, not sure, yeah, you can see the spark there. So now let me show you when we light this, what we're doing, hit the igniter, we're going to press the knob in and we're gonna hold it in place. I'm turning the knob to light and now I'm pressing it in and you can see the flame shoot up there. 
exactly what we want to see. You may need to hold that knob down for 10 or 15 seconds until that thermocouple heats up. And then our flames are coming out just fine. So we're going to just test the other side now. What's interesting is you notice that this one only has an on and an off. That's your only two options here. But your top flame, the flame that comes up and runs over the top of the pizza from this side burner, it creates a canopy. It's what helps melt that cheese and cook it so well from the top. That one actually has an adjustment as well. So let's go ahead and get this one started. I'm going to turn it to the light position. And that is on. And it's on high. Let me show you what that looks like. As they come right in here, you can see the flames, and they run right up over the top of the oven. That's how you get that nice heat over the top of the pizza. Now, you see that one orange flame there? That's the actual uh, igniter piece heating up quite a bit. So that'll be interesting to see how well that lasts over time. But that burner is on high, and if we go to low, you can see we can really lower that flame to something a little bit more manageable. But there we go. All right, we've got a couple of last steps. We have now assembled it. We have tested for any leaks. We validated that the valves work. We understand how they work. We know how it lights. It's time to go ahead and put in our stone. It's got a little arrow here to indicate which side goes in first. We're just gonna slide this right onto the rack. I'm gonna slide this right into the rack and then we're just gonna go ahead and put it down. I'm watching my fingers because I don't wanna touch any of that stuff that's very, very hot. And there we go. Our stone is in place. Now it comes with this little tool. Now let's not kid ourselves, that is a bottle opener, as is that, but it also has this little tool so you can lift it up and it makes it a lot easier to remove that. The other item we have is our folding pizza peel. And just take this little guy, fold it open, let that hit right in, and we have our, our peel for actually lifting up our pizzas. It feels a little flimsy, we'll see how that does. And the last piece is our actual cover. Now. You never light this with the cover on. As you can imagine, that would be a bad plan, but that just sits in there. All it's designed to do is give this a little heat. What I like about this, a couple of things. One, these little flames right here, these are actually holes. It's an inspection port. If you want to see if that burner's burning, you can just lean down and look. It's also where you could stick a long stick um, igniter or match in there to light that burner manually if for some reason your igniter wasn't working or your battery was dead. Um, you can do the same with this one from underneath here. Just after running that thing for, I don't know, a minute, it's pretty warm up here. You wanna be really careful you do not touch the outside of this thing. And we will go ahead and preheat this thing and see what our temperature gets up to. Now, our temperature goes up to 650 degrees. We'll see if it goes that high, 650 Fahrenheit. We'll see if it gets up that high. But that's our goal, let's give this thing a shot. We're gonna go ahead and get this lit. I heard the bottom one light, I heard the side one light, but I'm just gonna go about medium heat on that side one. And we will close this guy up. We'll take a look at our temperature and see what it gets up to. This is right at about 530 degrees right now. And what I want to do is I know this thing has got to be hot, right? And you have to assume at this price point, they didn't make it double insulated or anything like that. So I thought I would use just a little gun thermometer, take a look at what we've got here. So on the lower half, below the vent line, we're sitting at 92, not too bad. As soon as I go up to right above this little shelf, it's 125 here. I go right to the edge of this curve, there's 130. Go right up here to the top of the unit. So it's 200, not as bad as I thought. 290 on the chimney, top of the chimney, chimney 272. It's definitely hot. Let's look at the front of the unit. 180 to 212 along this metal ridge here. The actual door, 250, 260. So this says we're at 540 degrees or so. I'm gonna go ahead and Open this up and let's see what we've got right on the stone. Wow, it just says high. I saw it blink up to 570. So apparently I'm gonna need a slightly higher temperature uh, thermometer gun because I saw 575 and then this went to high. So that tells you what the air is in there. Okay, this has been off for, I don't know, five minutes maybe? Just to give you an idea on how hot that stone is. 550 degrees still on the stone, 547 over there. Two minutes ago, it was still 575. So 
that thing retains its heat very well. Mm -hmm.